The volume rendering algorithm uses a transfer function to assign color and opacity based on both data values and gradient magnitudes of the volume. Here we see the 2D data value gradient magnitude histogram of the tooth data set, and the pulp of the tooth is colored red. The color swatches can be moved, turned on and off, and modified to interactively explore the data. While the 2D histogram is a powerful representation of the data, it is not typically an intuitive space for scientists. To One of the things that's happened, I think, recently on, on the visualization side is the ability to see things at these, these high, high resolutions for the first time um, and, the, and the ability to see them in more of an, a time-dependent, interactive way rather than a played-back movie from one f viewpoint has allowed scientists to gain insight that they couldn't get in any other ways. And this is how we progress in science. These are the tools that we've created that open new windows for the scientists to see in new ways. If you look at many, maybe even most of the great discoveries throughout mankind, you'll find that, that before the great discovery was the creation of a new tool or a tool that's been used in a new way. And that's really where high performance computing and visualization, these high uh, resolution display walls that people are creating, um, the, the graphics cards that, that people are creating, the, the hardware side, the new algorithms, the software, these are the new tools for the scientists to look at their data and their science in new ways and will make new discoveries because of it. And we're really starting to be able to work not only in, in this particular application, but in many applications where you're taking the best people in computer and computational science and the best people in neurosurgery or physics or whatever it is, and you're working together to solve problems that neither of you could have solved previously. And I think that's where we're at with a lot of different applications, is that we're at this tip of the iceberg where we are going to see a golden age of scientific computing, and specifically for some of the applications we're working in, 
is the applications of computing in medicine, where we're going to be able to transform some of the ways that they do medical imaging and diagnosis and treatment um, with computing, and it's going to be amazing. A lot of us really feel like we're in this golden age where we've been working up, you know, taking these things that the, the fastest computers and the best software that we've had but it really could only do a small portion of what we wanted it to do in terms of addressing the complexity and the needs that we had and, and answering the questions that we had. And I think we're just getting to this point where we're seeing that we're able to, with the advanced hardware and software and algorithms, that we're starting to be able to answer some of these questions that we've always wanted to answer for the very first time. And we're starting to open windows into discovery that we've never been able to open before. And that's leading us into very new and very interesting places. And I think it's leading to this, this golden age of where scientific computing is going to change the way we do science and medicine. Thank you.